Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's November the 27th and we're looking at Peter's second letter and we're still in chapter 1. Starting to read at verse 12 to 21. My password today is found in verse 21. Favourite scripture of mine. In the second part of this chapter, from verse 15 onward, Peter begins to talk about the importance of the scriptures. First of all, he says that we remember um, the time when God spoke from heaven and said of the Lord Jesus, This is my beloved Son. That's a wonderful thing. Peter remembers that. Peter will never forget that. However, he says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. What could be more sure than hearing a voice from heaven? Well, the scriptures are a more sure word of prophecy. Let me read what Peter says. <clears throat> Moreover, I will endeavour that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of the Lord Jesus, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honour and glory, and when there came a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. We have also <clears throat> in the holy mountain. Let me just, I've lost my, I've lost my verse here now. Uh, this right in the holy mountain verse 19 there we are we have also a more sure word of prophecy when unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, there's two things here. Verse 21 is my password, but I want us to look at verse 20 as well. He says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. Now when the Bible speaks of itself, the Bible, it doesn't use the phrase the Word of God because the word word, which is either logos or rima, is always referring to the spoken word. So when they preached, they preached the Word of God. If I said to you I would like to have a word with you, it would mean I want to speak into your ears. I didn't want to write it down. If I was going to write it down then it would be giving you a script. But if I want to have a word with you, a spoken word, then that is preaching or teaching. And right through the Acts when the word the Word of God is used it's always referring to the preaching or the teaching of the Gospel. We've, we've, we as Christians have just slipped up in our meaning, in our understanding of this word. When the Bible is referring to the written scriptures, when it's referring to itself, the word is always scriptures, scriptures. And he says, I want you to know, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation people say oh well that's what I think I know that you think differently but I have a different point of view no no the scripture is not of private interpretation you can't just make this Bible mean whatever you feel like making it mean what the Bible means is what it actually says 
and what the Bible says is based upon the words that are used in the context of its original writing. So our, our task in understanding and interpreting the Bible is very simply to discover what the original words meant and how they were used in Scripture and also to understand the context in which the words were said. And once we understand the meaning of the words and the context in which they're said, that is the interpretation. It's not just whatever we feel like making it because no scripture is of private interpretation. Now we might impose our thinking upon the scripture. That's something that we should avoid studiously. We should avoid that. We should let the Bible itself speak. And whatever the Bible says, whatever the prophecy says, that is the interpretation. <coughs> And then we get to verse 21. He says, The reason why I'm saying that it's of no private interpretation is because the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It wasn't men that sat down and said, Hmm, I think I'll write something about God. No, they didn't do that. It wasn't invented by men. When we talk about Paul's teaching, we don't mean what Paul thinks. <laughs> what we mean is, this is what God thinks, and he's conveying it to us through Paul. When we read of Peter's letter here, we're not receiving what Peter thinks. It's not his private interpretation. This is what God the Holy Spirit has given Peter to say. And what he says in the context of what he's saying is the word of God and it is because he's written it down it is a scriptures it is a script it's handwritten <clears throat> the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man I think we really need to get a grip of that now they weren't um, they weren't emmanuensis they weren't just writing down God's words this was the word of God that came into the heart and mind of the prophets. And when they wrote it, they wrote it under the overall superintendence of the Holy Spirit. So that what they were writing was actually prophecy. And what we have written in the scriptures is the actual words of God. The actual words of God. Now, it's a very interesting phrase there at the very end. He says, Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Have you got that now? <coughs> Holy men of God spoke. They didn't. It's not saying about what they wrote. It says when they spoke. This was the word of God, you see. The word of God was the spoken word. The holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now these two words, moved and Holy Ghost, are fascinating. I'll take a moment to explain them. The word moved is a Greek word which, which it, it, we could say it as being pharaoh. It's from which we get our word ferry. A ferry. We all know what a ferry is. A ferry is a boat. And of course in those days the boats, the ferries, were sailing ships. And they would uh, load up the ferry with the cargo and hoist the sails and away they'd go. The wind would carry them to their, to their destination. But let's look, let's look at the word Holy Ghost. The word Holy Ghost there, it is the word pneumatos. And it means the wind. It means the wind. So these holy men of God, they lifted up the mast on their little boat and the wind of God drew, drove them forward in their mission. So the empowering of their inspiration was the Holy Spirit. The actual words of their inspiration were of the Holy Spirit. This is what the prophecy was. 
it was an act of the Holy Spirit in which he just filled their sails and compelled them to write or compelled them originally to speak what a wonderful thing we have but just remember this when we have that little phrase the word of God it means the preached word but when we have the word scripture it means the written word that's the point it's the written word so on a Sunday morning when I'm preaching the gospel or ministering to the saints it is the word of God this is a word from God that I'm preaching just like all of the evangelists in the Acts when they preached they preached the word of God but when we preach the word of God we refer and we preach from the scriptures that's the written word of God so quite a different thing altogether so great to talk to you look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow just remember that the word of God is more important than our personal experiences whatever they may be God bless you have a wonderful day bye for now